We need to provide a single cohesive API set and platform for you to develop on. And as you can see, there are multiple panes that a consumer pans through on the device. We have a spotlight section which allows for uh, news aggregation, uh, things that the developer can check out, or sorry, consumer can check out. Um, new games that might be available on the service. Uh, your identity on Xbox Live, so your avatar, gamer score, the last achievement that you got. Asynchronous gaming is very important to us on Xbox Live for Windows Phone 7 series. We think that that's going to be a great experience that people will attach to. So you'll see that we have this concept of requests, and that's basically how you see if it's your turn or a friend would like to initiate a game with you. And then we have the collection of all your games across the console. Ones that you acquired through Xbox Live and ones that you acquired through Marketplace. Let's talk a little about the Windows Phone 7 series hardware. One of the things that we've heard constantly from developers is the need for consistency and being able to target a consistent platform. What we've done for Windows Phone 7 series is really defined a consistent set of hardware capabilities defined for this phone. So we have one resolution available at launch, which is 800 by 480, with a second one available shortly after, which is 480 by 320. These all have the same touch input, a consistent processor and GPU across these devices, same available RAM. One of the few things that OEMs can customize is provide an optional keyboard. When talking about the developer experience, there's really two user experience frameworks that are available to develop on for Windows Phone 7 series. The first one is Microsoft Silverlight, which is really a modern event-driven framework that leverages XAML, um, HTML, and JavaScript and has quite a bit of adoption today. The other one is XNA and XNA Game Studio, which allows for the creation of high performance 2D and 3D games and really has a mature, rich content pipeline that we've built into the product. And we'll talk more about that as time goes on. But the key takeaway from this is that you can use the XNA framework for games or applications, or you can use Silverlight for applications or games. It's really up to you choosing the best technology that works for you. The XNA framework, which is part of the XNA Game Studio product, is really designed to provide a robust API set for game development. And built around that, we use C Sharp, .NET, and Visual Studio tooling, which allows you to take advantage of all the other great kind of framework properties that Microsoft has to offer. Um, as I just discussed on the slide before, we have solutions for game content processing and an art pipeline, but really XNA Game Studio isn't designed to be an engine solution. It's really designed to be a framework that you as a developer build on top of. And we'll talk a lot about how we put in the plumbing in place for you. So the game that I'm going to show you real quick is a game called uh, The Harvest. It was developed by Luma Arcade. Um, start to, to come up there. This game was developed in the course of three weeks. So we gave some developers early access to our tools and really asked them to give us an experience that they thought might be compelling on the phone. So I'll hit play on this. And the thing that you'll see about this game is that it's a full 3D game. Everything you're seeing here is rendered in real geometry. Um, the animation of the character that you see there is uh, completely rendered in 3D, done all in XNA Game Studio 4.0. You'll see that it's touched, so I can kind of move him around. But really, we think that that's a powerful platform that says something like, you can get this up and running in full 3D with animated characters and provide a great core experience on the phone. One of the things that we provided on Windows Phone 7 series is this idea of configurable effects. So you basically have these different effects that you can choose from, which you see here. So basic effect, which is kind of a three-point lighting effect, skin effect, environment map, dual textures, and alpha uh, textures, alpha tests. So 
Um, Sean's going to go in much deeper into these, but a key takeaway is custom effects aren't available on Windows Phone 7 series. One of the great advantages that we're providing on Windows Phone 7 series with uh, graphics in particular is we have system support for a scaler and orientation. So one of the great things that we have on the Xbox 360 is the ability to render something at a lower resolution and then through hardware scale that up to the native resolution that the user has their Xbox 360 set to. And we're providing some similar functionality on Windows Phone 7 series. So this allows you also to write your game without worrying about the native resolution of the device. We'll do automatic kind of translation between portrait and landscape, and we automatically translate the touch inputs as well between portrait and landscape. The scaler also has the ability to dramatically improve performance on the platform. The game that I showed you earlier was actually rendering at the full resolution of the device, so it was rendering at 480 by 800, but you as a developer have the choice to trade crispness when that scales up for improved performance or pushing the platform even more.